and some of the work that's being done at EKU, which I think is, is important for all of us. And I don't know that there's a topic that's more critical these days than uh, supply chain, as we hear about it, uh, as to whether our kids are going to get their Christmas gifts in time or whether there's going to be enough toilet paper in the supermarket shelves. So Lord knows we need more people who have good supply chain background and, uh, and services, and EKU certainly has an interesting program. With that, I'm going to turn it over to Kirby. I'm going to kill my video and my mute myself and we'll go from there. Kirby, it's all yours. All right. Well, it's good to be with um, uh, with everyone tonight. I see uh, a few very familiar faces. It's uh, been a while since we have had an opportunity to, to meet in person. Uh, so again, thank you for the opportunity, uh, Eric, for uh, letting me present, not just on behalf of our global supply chain program, uh, but I'm actually going to give an update on EKU overall. Uh, and then I'm also going to talk about our college of business. Uh, just uh, really quickly here, uh, a bit about myself. I, I did spend 22 years in industry. Uh, the majority of that was with Corning Incorporated, uh, two international assignments. And uh, I came back to uh, the U.S. in 2014. My mother was uh, older and in rapidly declining health. Uh, she had me, uh, my father and my mother had me later in life. And I wanted to come back to the U.S. to care for her, uh, and it worked out just perfectly. EKU was wanting to launch a supply chain program. I thought I would be in academia for a couple years, get the program up and running, and then move back to Corning. I've had that opportunity several times, but I'm, I'm really enjoying uh, being at uh, the university. I teach at EKU full-time. I teach at... Um, at UK uh, part-time, I think everybody knows, uh, maybe some of you don't, but um, this is the second year of UK's new Masters of Science in Supply Chain Management, the only MS program in Supply Chain Management in the state. So um, my contact information is here. Most of you uh, I'm in regular contact with, but I would certainly love to hear from you. Uh, again, I want to talk about EKU overall, our College of Business, and then specifically we'll go into supply chain management. Uh, this is informal. If you have a question, you don't have to the end. Uh, I would welcome a question or questions at any point. If we look at uh, EKU overall, uh, this is our first semester uh, back on campus uh, since um, spring. 2020. So like most universities, we've been operating in a um, mostly online, uh, somewhat hybrid mode uh, for the last two years, but uh, we are back on campus this semester. Uh, overall, if you look at, uh, at EKU, um, our enrollment is actually uh, up uh, compared to um, uh, the last academic year. Uh, we're the only university in Kentucky, if you look at the last bullet point, uh, to have a higher freshman enrollment this year uh, compared to uh, this last year. So we're up 214 students. Uh, we also take pride at EKU in, in being uh, the school of opportunity. So if you look uh, for the last four or five years, uh, we have uh, led all of the state institutions uh, with the highest percentage of uh, in-state students, and then also uh, first-generation students. About 35% of our freshmen uh, are first-generation college students. There's been a, quite a bit of reorganization, uh, realignment going on at EKU over the last year. Uh, our College of Business and Technology uh, has, uh, I guess, uh, demerged, <laughs> and uh, the College of Business is now a standalone comprehensive business school. And uh, the technology uh, part of, uh, again, what was formerly the College of Business and Technology, uh, we now have a new STEM college at EKU. We're very excited about that. And um, we're in the process of rolling out this next academic year, so fall 2022, we're gonna be rolling out a manufacturing engineering program. 
and uh, we're currently putting together an advisory board. I've been using a lot of my business contacts and reaching out to um, manufacturing uh, engineers and so forth at the different companies across central Kentucky. Uh, and we're very excited not only about the new STEM college overall, uh, but in particular, the new manufacturing engineering program. Dr. Tom Erickson, uh, Eric and several others uh, know that name. Tom has been our uh, Dean of the College of Business and Technology uh, since I joined in 2014. We actually joined at the same time. Uh, Tom has about 50 years in higher education and uh, he's in the process of retiring. So this academic year, uh, he's not our Dean, uh, but rather he is the, you might say the program director uh, leading that new uh, manufacturing engineering program. We recently received our largest donation in school history. And we also just recently, uh, this semester, uh, we joined a new athletics conference, uh, the A-Sun. And we're very pleased that attendance is up in all of our, uh, all of our athletic teams. Any comments or questions about the university overall? Just wanted to touch on some, some highlights. Let me go on then and talk about the, the College of Business. So as I said, uh, Dr. Erickson is transitioning into retirement. Uh, the Dean search is underway. Uh, we hope to have uh, finalists. Uh, we plan to have uh, some finalists uh, in January and uh, go through the vetting process. And uh, the goal is to have the new dean in place uh, this upcoming summer, summer 2022, uh, such that, um, you know, starting with the next academic year, he or she uh, is acclimated and, and ready to start the new academic year. We're focusing a lot on growth programs uh, at EKU and the College of Business. Uh, money and banking is a very hot area. Uh, supply chain, of course, my area. Uh, we recently created a new sales center. Uh, and we're also supporting the university with um, uh, traditionally our business school and EKU overall. Uh, we've been a little bit slow with uh, eCampus and online course offerings, and we're, uh, we're hustling to catch up. Uh, so, for example, uh, mo about half of our supply chain degree, uh, the courses in our supply chain program are now offered uh, online. Uh, so for the most part, a student could uh, be in our supply chain program and, and go mostly online the first three years uh, and then come to campus uh, for you know, just the fourth year. Uh, and the expectation is that within a few years, our entire uh, supply chain program uh, will be online. We have a new online MBA program, complements our uh, in person. Uh, we had an MBA program at EKU. Uh, this is our 54th year, uh, but just this year, we have uh, rolled out a new online MBA program, again, targeting those students for, for whatever reason uh, uh, don't have the ability or, or prefer uh, an online uh, experience. We have the AACSB reaccreditation coming up uh, this next year, AACSB. Uh, everybody on the call will know what ISO is. <laughs> well, A CSB is a very similar type of organization uh, as ISO. Uh, they ensure quality standards and so forth for uh, business schools all across uh, the world. Uh, you may find it interesting that only about 5% of colleges of business worldwide uh, have that accreditation. It's, it's sort of the gold standard for business schools. Uh, just today, uh, I'm very uh, pleased to share about the Salvation Army uh, canned food drive. Uh, there's a link there to the, to the story that EKU just recently published. This is something that I have led 
uh, pre-COVID uh, just for my supply chain students. But in talking with our uh, interim dean, uh, we did something different uh, this semester and, and we made it an entire college of business uh, opportunity uh, for all, all students, all majors, uh, all faculty. Uh, and we set a goal, uh, 2,500 cans. Uh, and as of today, uh, we took the last uh, load of, uh, of canned food over. Uh, we collected 3,389 cans of food. And we're very excited about that. It was a wonderful opportunity, a wonderful experience for our students. Not only did we uh, take, you know, over 3,000 cans of food. Uh, we also uh, had our students uh, kidding, making meal bags and so forth for those that are uh, homeless or passing through uh, Madison County, whatever the case might be. Uh, but the majority of those cans are going to make uh, holiday meal uh, boxes for families in need. So we're very proud of our, uh, and thankful I should say, for our outreach opportunities uh, in Madison County. Comment or question anything about the College of Business before I move on to what's most near and dear to us, supply chain? All right, I'll move on then. So our supply chain program, again, was launched in 2014. So this is the eighth year. Um, we were the first supply chain program uh, amongst the state's uh, eight public universities. Uh, since then, some of the other public universities uh, have added uh, supply chain programs. Uh, I mentioned UK earlier. This is the second year of their master's degree in supply chain. Uh, UK does not have a bachelor's in supply chain. Uh, and I think that's one of the reasons that they reached out to me uh, a couple years ago and said, well, you know, if, 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 if if, if EKU has the most robust supply chain program in the state uh, from an undergrad perspective, then obviously they wanted to recruit some of those students uh, to get their master's degree. Our supply chain program, I think, is uh, unique. If you look at universities and colleges across America that uh, say they have supply chain programs, when you look at it, uh, a great many of them uh, is actually logistics programs. Uh, and as we all know, logistics and supply chain aren't uh, the same thing. Uh, logistics is part of supply chain, uh, just like uh, sourcing and planning and production and quality and all of those things. So uh, our supply chain program is robust. It's comprehensive. Uh, it doesn't just cover uh, one pillar of the, of the SCORE framework. And again, this is the foundational framework. We also talk about uh, return and enable those things. But I just wanted to give you an idea. If you look down um, in the lower part of this slide and you see all of these asterisks, uh, you can see uh, these are examples of topics that we cover uh, in our classes. Uh, it's a very robust program. So again, I just wanted to highlight these are, and this isn't all inclusive by any means. Uh, but this does uh, give a nice representation uh, of the types of uh, things that we do talk about in class. And of course, we are constantly, uh, you know, uh, webbing in um, uh, topics, for example, you know, whether it's uh, COVID or the, the problems at the ports or whatever it might be, we're always uh, integrating uh, real world issues as, as they happen. Uh, obviously, we want to be the first school employers think of for supply chain talent. Uh, these are some of the heavyweight companies you might uh, say. Uh, TMMK, uh, Lockheed Martin uh, takes a lot of our students. Apache takes a lot of our students, uh, as well as Carhartt. Uh, we have some students now that are working for YUM at the corporate level. Uh, one of our students from a few semesters ago He's working in uh, capital procurement on uh, the Taco Bell side of Yum. Uh, so his job is to negotiate for all of the uh, equipment that's used, uh, in essence, in the, in the kitchen area 
of, um, of Taco Bells nationwide. We'll look at the next slide, some things that uh, make uh, makes our program unique. Again, it's comprehensive. We do put a very heavy emphasis on interpersonal skills, uh, professional skills, uh, effective writing, uh, critical thinking, uh, meeting deadlines. Those are all things that uh, we get a lot of feedback from employers uh, that students uh, graduate and they come to work that uh, generally uh, these types of issues are uh, at, a, at a higher level than, than students that uh, new graduates that they might uh, compete with. A lot of engagement with industry professionals. Uh, I'll talk more about internships in a few minutes. Uh, we bring a lot of guest speakers to campus. Uh, we do field trips. Uh, probably should think of a, a better name than field trips, but uh, for example, we just took uh, two of our classes to Thunder Manufacturing here in Richmond. Uh, Thunder is a, a large uh, stamping company uh, for the automotive industry. Uh, we do a lot of those kinds of things. Uh, something I would like to really highlight for, for folks on, uh, online here, uh, our students typically when they become juniors and seniors, many of them are able to work out or schedule uh, to where they're only on campus uh, two, two days a week. So at EKU, our classes are on, uh, in our business school, I should say. Our classes are on Monday, Wednesday, or Tuesday, Thursday, uh, or night classes. Our night classes meet one, out, uh, one night a week, uh, 6 to 8.30, roughly. So when our students uh, become juniors and even more so seniors, often they're able to uh, work out their uh, course load to where they're only on campus two days a week, and what that allows them is to a large degree, uh, three days of working part-time, whether we call it an internship or a co-op, whatever it might be. Uh, we don't have classes on Fridays. So again, uh, a lot of our students that intern, uh, many of them can work upwards of you know, 25 to 30 hours a week. And as I mentioned, we do a lot in the community Salvation Army is just one example, God's Pantry. Uh, we did some uh, work um, just prior to COVID with making these, um, these little backpacks for kids in the county school systems that um, are you know, in need of uh, food uh, over the weekend. So they could pick up these food backpacks on a Friday as they leave school uh, and it has you know, food and so forth for them. Uh, to eat on, uh, and they bring the backpack uh, back on a Monday, and uh, the cycle repeats. So, we do a lot of things in the community. We we raised uh, money um, a year or so ago, and um, basically went to a child development center uh, here in in Richmond, a predominantly lower income. And, uh, and had a little Christmas party uh, with those kids. And we had one of the students dress up like Santa and you know, had cookies and things like that. And we, we try to really foster that servant leadership uh, approach. This is uh, the picture here on the left. This was the, the trip to Thunder Manufacturing that I mentioned just a couple weeks ago. This was the plant manager of uh, Thunder. And I particularly like this picture. You can see just how engaged and how intently uh, the students are, are listening and taking notes and so forth. This particular slide just uh, highlights some of the different companies and roles that our students go into. Uh, a lot of them actually start out as entry level buyers or uh, a logistician. Uh, some of them start out, you know, working in, uh, in quality, supplier quality. Um, some of them uh, work in, in areas that uh, 
you can see one of the grads went to work for SpaceX out in California. And that was pretty exciting. So you look through this list and it's, uh, it's a pretty blue chip listing of companies uh, in the uh, entry level type roles that, that you might expect. So talking about internships, I'm, I'm very excited about this. Uh, of all the different programs in our College of Business, our supply chain program, we've had more internships than any other program. So you think about accounting as an example, uh, but we've had over 150 paid internships uh, since 2014. And our interns, they, they, they earn you know, good money, you know, typically 15 to $25 an hour. Uh, this picture, uh, this picture is only about uh, two days old. So I took this picture earlier in the week and I just highlight these students. You see uh, this young lady on the left. Uh, she was our first intern with HT uh, Hackney, a, a food distributor um, this past summer. And now she is a supply chain intern with uh, Electro Dryer. I think many, many of you all are familiar with Electro Dryer. Uh, this young man in the middle, he's our first ever intern with Clark Equipment in Lexington. And then this young man on the right, uh, he parlayed uh, the trip to Thunder Manufacturing that I've mentioned uh, a few times now. Um, he struck up a conversation with the plant manager when we were touring uh, two or three weeks ago, and, and now he's our first supply chain intern with Thunder. And uh, very proud of those students. Uh, you can see this is just a, a small listing, uh, a short listing of companies where our students intern. Again, Clark is the new one, uh, Lockheed Martin. Uh, BMW, this was interesting. We. We haven't had very many of these instances, but one of our students, this has been about a year ago, was offered just a phenomenal semester long internship at BMW. And it was a full time internship. He worked about 50 hours a week in South Carolina. And so he, in essence, took you know, a semester off because of you know, it's being such a wonderful opportunity. He took a semester off from his academic studies. I think he maybe took uh, two online courses, something like that. But for the most part, he worked full time uh, as an intern at BMW in Spartanburg. And we also, this last summer, we had our first corporate uh, internship with Walmart. And uh, that young lady, uh, if you look up, uh, Autumn Robinson on uh, LinkedIn. She just did a big posting today. She graduates in May. Uh, Walmart just made her a tremendous offer. She's going to be moving to uh, one of the Walmart uh, distribution centers in uh, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Very proud of her. About 99% of our supply chain students receive full-time offers uh, upon graduating. Uh, it was a solid 100%, uh, but of course, with uh, COVID uh, early on, there were a, a few students that uh, kind of got the uh, call um, with having job offers rescinded and so forth at the start of COVID. And companies, very different problem than we're having now, but a very, very high placement rate. A lot of our students have uh, two or three offers to choose from upon graduating. This young lady here, Joelle Ferguson, she's had multiple internships. And um, about 90% of our supply chain students who intern receive a job offer from that company upon graduating. Uh, I don't know what the benchmark is, but I think that's a pretty high number. And I think it just shows how highly our students are valued uh, that when they go into an internship role, um, it's sort of a test drive, right? It's a test drive of the student to see their capability and their professionalism, the value that they add 
and that 90% of those students would receive a job offer, I think is uh, a, a testament to our program. This is a picture from a few years ago. You'll see Eric in the back. <laughs> and there I am standing uh, right next to him. I don't know if we have anybody else on the phone that's in this picture. Uh, but uh, pre-COVID, uh, we were doing these joint student and professional chapter uh, on-campus meetings uh, once a year. You can see Dean Erickson over here on the right. And of course, with uh, again, COVID, we, we haven't been able to do this for the last two years, but this is something we would definitely like to start doing again in the very near future. So in summary, if you look at our, uh, our College of Business and our global supply chain, <laughs> um, it, it, it is the number one fastest growing program at EKU. Uh, yeah. And in fact, it's uh, in the top five fastest growing programs at the uh, entire university. And when we look at that, you know, we're looking at the growth and enrollment, you know, the program didn't exist until 2014. Uh, so to go from, you know, non-existent to uh, classroom sizes of, you know, upwards of 50 students, uh, that is not common. That, that is not common yeah. need. Again, near 100% job placement, average starting salary, and of course that's going up right now. It's a good time to be a, a, a you know graduating college. Oh, okay. So many companies uh, hiring. Uh, I'll be interested um, in, in seeing what our new grads you know graduate okay. next May. Uh, but 90% of our students start out in the 40. Uh, 55,000 range, 48 to 55,000. That's where most of our students start out. Uh, we have had students that start out, um, you know, in the low 70s, you know, 22 year old, uh, graduating, uh, going to work, um, you know, low 70,000 range. Again, over 150 internships with some of the best, you know, most well known companies. Uh, in the region, and, and maybe there's some folks on the line here that uh, there's something I've said that you're like, hey, I'm, I'm interested in an EKU intern myself. Well, uh, you have all my uh, contact uh, information, okay? Our plans for 2022, I'm actually working on this uh, right now. Um, we're moving our supply chain program from the general business department uh, over to the management department. Uh, if you look at supply chain programs across the U.S., about half of the uh, half of them are, uh, I should say, about a third belong to the marketing department. About a third belong to the management department, and, and the other third, typically the, the general business programs. Uh, but we are in the process of moving over to the uh, the management uh, department. Uh, which will give us some advantages with uh, sharing faculty and so forth. We do want to restart our executive speaker series. Uh, just to talk a bit more about the executive speaker series, we're always bringing uh, guest speakers to campus. Uh, we, we do that many times, you know, per semester uh, on a recurring basis. The Supply Chain Executive Speaker Series is, is typically when we bring a C-suite executive. Um, for example, Tanya Jackson of Lexmark uh, came and, and spoke. Uh, William Hardy, uh, the Chief Supply Chain Officer for Carhartt. We're typically bringing a, a very, very high level executive to campus. Uh, and it's not just a, a presentation, it's typically uh, a you know, lunch with students, uh, a time of, um, you know, just in, engaging and networking. Um, there's typically a, a period of time to meet with uh, the supply chain faculty and, and just share, you know, here's what we're teaching in the classroom. And, and conversely, you know, here are the hot topics in industry. Um, something really wonderful um, is happening here in, in the Commonwealth. Now that is the Department of Education um, is, is, is wanting to roll out supply chain curriculums 
uh, as an option uh, in our high schools. So I think back, you know, I graduated high school in 1988. And at that time, we called it vocational school. And you could study, you know, drafting or carpentry or, um, you know, uh, automotive mechanics, uh, uh, welding, those sort of things. Well, those types of programs still exist, but you know there are a lot more career-ready type fields uh, that high school students can take. And we actually rolled out our first supply chain curriculum for high school students uh, this semester. And um, I think there will be uh, many more uh, high schools in 2022 uh, that will have supply chain curriculums that uh, juniors and seniors can can, can pursue. And I think that will certainly help with uh, having more students that are aware of what supply chain is uh, when they come to college. That's one of the challenges, as you all might imagine, uh, very few students come to college saying, I want to be a supply chain manager. <laughs> they just are not aware of the field. They typically know, well, I want to study accounting, or I want to study marketing, or I want to be an HR person. Um, so I think, you know, there's going to be an additional benefit with teaching, uh, having these supply chain programs uh, in our high schools, that more students will come to college with knowing, ah, I want to study supply chain for my four-year degree. I'm excited to tell you something on a personal note. Um, I am uh, actively writing uh, a new book. It's called uh, Cool Kirby's <laughs> Supply Chain Adventures. And uh, several uh, textbook uh, companies have, have contacted me over the last two years, wanting me to write a traditional college textbook on supply chain. And uh, that honestly just never excited me. Uh, there's, there's not a shortage of supply chain textbooks. I thought, you know, what, what am I going to say that's going to be any different than some other college textbook? But I got to thinking that, you know, I would like to write uh, not necessarily a textbook, but I would like to write a novel, you might say, uh, that introduces supply chain management to, to high school students. Um, and, you know, maybe those uh, college freshmen that are undecided about a career and looking for more information. So Cole Kirby uh, is a manufacturer of uh, high-end skateboards and uh, looking to expand internationally. And so this book, uh, which will be out uh, next summer, uh, it'll be in college bookstores, it'll be on Amazon, uh, I expect it, you know, be in Barnes and Noble and so forth. This book will be, again, geared towards high school students and uh, college freshmen and sophomore uh, that, uh, again, are undecided, but uh, something that's more interesting to read uh, than uh, a textbook, per se. So I'm very excited about this. All right, so uh, wrapping up here. If you have uh, an interest in uh, an EKU student as an intern or a full-time job, uh, there's really two different paths. Uh, this very nice lady here, Darlene Stalker, uh, if you reach out to her, uh, she will do a, a posting uh, for any college of business student to apply. So if you contact her, uh, you may have, for example, a, a student that uh, you're looking for a, a supply chain student, uh, but, a, but a finance student or an HR student uh, might apply, and that would be fine. Uh, if you contact me, uh, I'm only going to send you supply chain students, okay? I can certainly help you if you're looking for a student in a different area, and building the relationships that I have over the last uh, eight years with the different companies in the region. I often have companies uh, contact me and they're like, hey, Kirby, uh, we're looking for an entry-level accountant or we're looking for an entry-level HR person. Well, I teach those students too. They take my classes. 
But if you contact me looking for a supply chain uh, student, uh, then I'm going to screen them. Uh, I'm going to vet them. Um, I always tell people, and I mean it uh, sincerely, I'm never going to send you anybody that I wouldn't uh, hire or want on my team uh, if I was still in industry. Okay. So two different paths. And again, I shared my email and um, or my cell phone rather at the beginning of the of the meeting. Folks, that's all I have for EKU overall and our College of Business and our supply chain program. Uh, hope you found it uh, beneficial, a good use of your time. And I'll simply offer it up to any questions that you might have. So Kirby, thank you. Um, I have a quick question for you. With your certification or your, your certification program that you have there, what's the majors that these students have um, that, that adds to the strength that these kids bring to supply chain? Eric, can you say that a little bit different way? I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, let me, let me think of it a little different way. So, so they're not getting a bachelor's in supply chain. They're getting bachelor's yeah, so. in, in, other, in other diploma areas which yes. may, may make them a much stronger student in many ways or, or more mm -hmm. uh, a stronger potential employee because they've got a broader, more general knowledge in addition to the stuff that they've learned uh, yes. in general. Okay, let me talk about that. So at EKU, uh, like most other universities, uh, a four-year uh, program, our students take the general ed classes, the music appreciation and the literature and the you know, the, the health and all of those uh, uh, courses that we all took their first two years. Our third year, we have a very robust, uh, what we call the business core. In the business core, all of our business students are, for example, taking uh, an introduction to uh, information systems uh, and accounting and HR and finance and marketing and management. Uh, and then in the fourth year is where the student uh, typically really focuses in on their particular uh, area of interest, whether that be supply chain or, or whatever it might be. I will tell you that uh, at EKU, for example, we have uh, a bachelor's um, uh, in accounting. And under accounting, we have public accounting and we have uh, managerial County. Well, uh, in management, we have a, a management degree, and then we have human resource management. Uh, we have entrepreneurship, uh, and uh, we're soon going to, as I mentioned, move uh, supply chain from general business uh, over to management. Now, at EKU, this isn't uh, any different than any other university. For example, I got my master's at Penn State. And um, uh, at Penn State, it's, you know, a, um, their bachelor's degree program is a, a bachelor's in marketing uh, with, you know, a constant in support. We have it at EKU. Uh, it's a bachelor's in general business uh, with uh, an emphasis in supply chain, 30 uh, hours of studies in the supply chain field. And it'll simply be going forward uh, a bachelor's degree in management uh, with an emphasis in supply chain. So our supply chain curriculum won't change. It'll just be the name on the degree at, at, you know, at the higher level that changes. Good question. Yeah, thanks. It, it just shows the, the breadth that some of these students really have and, and why they're attracted to other organizations. Yeah, and I should mention a little bit, um, this semester is the first semester that uh, our business core uh, hadn't been refreshed in about 15 years. So over the course of um, uh, the last year, uh, we have been working and developing, and just this semester, uh, we rolled out a new business core. And this won't surprise any of you, uh, but I made sure that every supply, every business student, let me get this exactly right. 
Every business student at EKU now takes a course in supply chain management. And I'm very excited about that. So regardless of whether they study HR or finance or marketing or whatever it might be, all of our business students now take a supply chain course. Great. Any other comments or questions? I know that didn't nearly take the full hour. <laughs> I'm okay. sure I won't uh, hold that against me. No. I could answer any other questions you have. Does anybody have any questions or comments for Kirby? Yeah, this is David Gross. I've got a quick question. I, I know we have you know, specific supply chain roles, but at Lexmark where I work, I work in supply chain as well as service. Have you ever had any students interested in the service side of the supply chain, how we provide customer service to? Um, you know, uh, we do. Uh, it's an area that going forward, I just made this comment earlier in the week, David, that, you know, we always want to continuously improve our program, uh, that we may need a supply chain services course. Uh, I have two young ladies right now that are interning uh, with the Lexus group. And the Lexus group owns Lexus dealerships from Tennessee to Michigan. Uh, and these young ladies are, uh, you know, very focused on uh, what, you know, things that they can do to optimize the overall customer service, uh, things that they can do at uh, looking at, you know, all of the different types of replacement and repair parts, uh, making, you know, doing some kind of Pareto analysis and, and looking at, you know, well, you know, this part turns over this many times per month or this, you know, this few times per month, whatever the case might be. So we have quite a few students actually that are working uh, in supply chain services roles. And um, I know as I'm always benchmarking other supply chain programs across the United States that many programs now have a dedicated course uh, in the area. Certainly on my radar. That's a wonderful question. Okay. Yeah. And I'll, I'll back. By the way, we have, I'm um, a representative for, you know, if you know, Billy Spears. Yes. He's on our advisory board. Yes. Um, for the student hiring in his area. So I'll be in touch because we have a couple of openings in the area. Uh, but they're, they're more in the service space than they are in the traditional supply chain space. So, yes, understand that. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, feel free, all of you, to, to text or call, uh, email at any time. Any other comments or questions? Well, if not, again, uh, thank you for your all's time. Thank you, Eric, for the invitation. And uh, I'll just close by wishing everyone. Uh, Hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving with your family. Thanks, Kirby. And uh, we'll be sharing this uh, recording with uh, Steve Ross of the ASQ folks have an example of it as well as out on our ASCM line. And again, everybody have a great Thanksgiving and thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks, everybody. Have a good